All right, welcome to part two of Scale and Attune. Uh, we're gonna get into the engine here and go through and uh, see how this is done. Before we continue, the information contained in this video is for educational purposes only. Any modifications and tuning of engines can have undesirable consequences if done improperly. Before attempting any modification, please do your own research and or consult a professional. Calibrating procedures learned in this video are done at your own risk and any damage or liability is your own responsibility. All right, so this is every table that's going to base, or basically every tab we're going to mess with here. Uh, as we go through each tab, um, this is going to be broken down further into more tables, and uh, there's going to be some notes on a few. Um, but in, in essence, we're going to go through the general, the idle, the uh, airflow, fuel, load calculations. Uh, going to go through what this is, basically kind of break it down, and then uh, we're going to get into the spark tables and then the torque tables after that. We need to understand what the load calculations are and how they're, how they're done before we can uh, uh, basically get into the spark and the torque because that's going to be a little different than the rest. Uh, but uh, we'll get right into it here in a sec, starting with the general tab. All right, so here's the general tab. Um, it's the first thing we're going to go to. It's going to be under engine general. And then, of course, uh, the thing we're concerned about on this tab is basically the cylinder volume. So we're going to change this cylinder volume, which is from 5.7 liter. This is the stock volume. Um, we're going to multiply that by our scaler of 80, uh, which is our 20% scale. Um, that's going to give us a, a value of 56658. Now, um, notice that this isn't actually what's going to come up in the calculator. It's going to autocorrect to this if you type in what comes up in the calculator. It's just going to correct to this number here. That's what we're going to put in. And uh, note, of course, that 20% down is 80% of the current setting since the multiplier is going to be 0.8. So 0.8 is going to be applied a lot of places here uh, coming up um, in order to do a 20%. All right, so we're in the engine, so we're going to go to the engine tab here, and then uh, we're going to be under the general. So as we see general here, I'm going to go ahead and hit our little tools bar here, hit, pull up the calculator, because uh, I can't do that in my head. So we're going to take this cylinder volume, and we're going to reduce it by 80%. So first we're going to go 0.70821. We're going to multiply that by 0.8. And we're going to get this number here, so 56658. Now I'm going to try to copy it in there. It may or may not work. Try to copy. Sometimes it uh, might be too long. Oh, there it goes. So it auto-corrects it. So you see the 56658 right there. And um, that's the corrected uh, and proper 80% of what it used to be. All right, so that's pretty much it on this tab because the rest is uh, let's do a shift light and tack output stuff. There really isn't much on this tab on a 411 to mess with. So that's it for this tab. All right, so next is the idle tab. So speaking of the idle tab, I have to mention this first up front, is the idle calculations seem to have a different calculation within the PCM, and some tables are seemingly unaffected by the math and VE or mass models. Um, when scaled the same, uh, it's really not going to be the same is the point. They will be changed, but they probably won't respond to the actual scaling. So idle tuning, tweaking is often required after a scale is performed for reliability. The direct percent does not apply to all tables as the calculation is unknown, at least to me. So I don't know what it is. If you know what it is, um, I'd, I'd, I'd love it if you could pop it in the comments down below. I'd, I'd love to know what that is and how, this, uh, how the idle gets to what it knows. But um, long story short is it won't respond well to, uh, to scaling most likely. Um, that's just this tab, the idle tab. So as a result, several tables may not respond well. Um, as we know, like the IAC and base running airflow, definitely don't respond well to a scale. Um, all tables that reference grams a second must be scaled. With those exceptions in mind, the idle will need to be tweaked thereafter, but initial scale should get the numbers close. So if you scale it initially, you might find uh, it may be close, it may not. You might have to come back towards stock. Um, it's hard to say. It varies car to car, and idle is very finicky anyway. So uh, just wanted to point that out before we get into this tab. Um, just want to go in order across the top, uh, but uh, basically the idle is going to be a little different than the uh, the rest of the tune. All right, so for HP tuners, here's the um, the list of uh, tables that will be affected by the uh, by grams a second, basically, or anything that's uh, got an airflow measurement. Here they are. So we got their proportional all. So got all of our proportionals, our integrals, and our derivatives. So this is under the RPM tab. So all these are going to be affected because they reference air mass. So to be correct, uh, technically you're going to have to reduce all of these by the percent change. So we're going to just multiply all these by 0 
So we'll go through and do that here in a sec. All right, next we're going to go over, go on over to the idle tab here. We're going to click on that. Um, we're going to be in the RPM tab under idle, uh, and we're going to see our adaptive idle, our numbers here, um, and we're going to go down and find anything that references grams per second. Uh, so we see the uh, proportional, integral, and derivative here. All of these are in grams per second. So we're going to open the uh, airflow high low um, and uh, multiply all these by the appropriate amount, which is 0.8, and uh, kind of just carry on through like this. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to uh, talk through the entire time here. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, multiply each one. Uh, but I'll fast forward through and uh, see at the end which ones need to be changed um, for your case. Uh, just to reference each table. Now, keeping in mind that uh, idle still may not uh, respond well to this, may or may not. Um, so I got to put that in, is that idle doesn't like scaling uh, for whatever reason. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, as you're doing this, you may have to come back to it at some point. It might get you close, it might not. All right, so next um, on our idle tables, we're gonna go over to the airflow tab under idle, and uh, we're gonna multiply all these by the percent change. Now, keeping in mind the base running airflow, um, this may be a good starting point, it may not. We're not really sure, we're gonna have to run it later. Uh, it might get us closer, uh, but we will have to come back to that one. Um, but the rest of this, same thing, applies all of this. Um, again, um, gonna get it adjusted by the percent, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at what the, that looks like here in a sec. All right, so we're going over to the airflow tab now. Um, as we see here, i uh, just going to leave this up for a sec so you guys can see what needs to be changed on this one. It's just like that. There we go. Airflow. Okay, uh, now we're going to go over to um, basically the base running airflow. we we'll start here. I'm not even going to mess with the IAC. We can come back to that because this is going to affect it. So we're going to go ahead and multiply this by 0.8. And then all of these as well. Um, technically, you can probably leave these alone, but um, just for sake of being thorough, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show all of those as well. Um, the bottom one you can leave alone because this is just the max learning. Um, two grams a second is more than enough, um, and it really won't affect it much if you leave it alone. Um, it's just the max uh, uh, learning amount. You can leave that one alone. Um, of course, a throttle follower and so on and so forth. So uh, let's go ahead. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fast forward through this one too and you can show the red tabs at the end.
Uh, so hopefully you guys like my crappy guitar playing uh, in the background. I have a really bad mic, so it's really hard to get the sound into the into the um, computer very well. But anyway, hope you guys like that. Um, anyway, uh, moving on now, we're going to get into the airflow tables under Airflow General. Now, I will say again, though, the tables that we just adjusted will absolutely have to be revisited because, again, we'll say it uh, because the idle doesn't like doesn't like scaling for whatever reason it's a different calculation so keeping that in mind so please remember that uh, so we're coming down to the percent change of the following tables these are extremely important these are the bread and butter of uh, of course the math and VE here the bread and butter of our, our air mass models and we absolutely must scale these accordingly so let's just jump right into it very simple though Alright, so now we're moving over to our airflow tab here under general series where we're going to make our, our big money for the uh, scale. So it's going to be under the VE and of course the math as well as EGR. If you're if you're using EGR, if that's a if that's case for you, then it may apply. Um, this is a stock tune, so I'm not sure if it would in uh, many cases out there. But it's real simple. All we're going to do is do the same thing we did with the other tables and multiply by 0.8 at the top and reduce the entire table as such. Now it's 80% of what it used to be, and that's what we're doing to change the calculation. And the same thing applies to the math, same way. We just multiply the top 0 0.8, entire thing, and we multiply that in and reduce the entire thing. So now you'll see that the maximum at 12,000 hertz is uh, reduced significantly um, from what it was stock. So. Uh, uh, that's pretty much it for the main tables um, and of course don't forget the cranking VE so we're gonna go ahead and do that one as well because uh, to be thorough make sure we get every air to airflow table that involves something that's in grams per second which this that's this is in percent so uh, just like the VE table again it's gonna be uh, the same thing so we're gonna change that and that's pretty much it for um, for that I got something to talk about with the charge temper temperature bias coming right up um, this has to be uh, this is a little different, so we're going to talk about that in a sec. All right, so still under Airflow General, um, the following tables you're going to have to shift over by 20%, um, not necessarily an entire uh, multiply across the the board because it's not going to work for us in this case. So um, as we look at the table, it's going to actually be a 150 is the maximum grams per second. Uh, so it's going to change where it ends up on the table. So this one actually has to be shifted. Um, basically, so this can actually become 120. 150 becomes 120 at 80%. So we're going to actually have to smooth it in a little bit and uh, change. It, it's going to affect the bias. And what this is going to affect is uh, basically our idle AFRs and if they like to creep around um, when it's heat soaked. So if your car likes to heat up and the IAT start to climb, uh, a lot of cars like to go lean um, in, the, in those circumstances. And it's typically because the bias is a little off. Um, if you, but basically, uh, what I'm saying is this table needs to be shifted so that's the takeaway so it has to be shifted and not necessarily um, multiplied across the board that's just not going to work in this case alright so cylinder charge temperature this one's a little different because um, uh, because of the way uh, the airflow is measured and that the, these numbers aren't actually grams a second on the table so uh, what this actually does um, well in most cases if you're running boost you should already have relocated the IAT sensor to the intake manifold and if that's the case it, um, you just go ahead and disable this and you're done that's it so you just call it a day right there and the model is completely disabled and this will not play a factor however if you have not moved the IAT you're going to leave it enabled we're going to come over to the bias and we're going to open that up alright so how this works is that zero is biasing uh, the ECT more because this is airflow along the top and um, I'm going to go ahead and change the units over to grams a second just because I like grams a second a little better. It's a little more visual for me. So 0 to 150 now. This is 150 grams a second. So 0 is very little flow. 0 to you know this end, this is all ECT. That means the air is moving slower so it has more time to soak in heat from the block. So it will bias ECT more. Over on the, on the right we have the IAT bias. So this is all the way over on the right. Now we've changed the airflow model on the entire calculation by changing VE, MAF, and uh, soon to be injectors. We're going to cover that next. Um, but uh, we changed the entire model and how it's calculated. So what that means is that instead of 150 grams a second or what previously was 150, it's actually going to be the new 120 because at 80% 120 is the new calculation. That's what we've, we've done. We've shifted over what that calculated value is. So whatever 120 is now at 80% was previously 150. 
So what we're going to have to do is actually move this number over to 120 and then copy that over because that's 80% of 150. So we're going to go ahead and interpolate that out to the end. And now we have what used to be 150. It'll bias um, above 120. It'll bias towards IAT um, at this value. Now, um, typically heat soak isn't an issue um, above like 50 grams a second anyway. You're just not going to have too many problems with it. However, at low, lower RPMs, this is always where you're going to have issues with the, uh, the heat soak factor. So that, that's where we have problems with it. And that's usually where you need adjustments anyway. But just to be proper, we're going to move this value over. And we're also going to interpolate this and smooth it in slightly, just like so. And we're good to go. Uh, so that's all we do to this table is just basically shift the maximum over and then uh, carry it on out. And that's it. So we also have to do the filter. Same thing, same reason. So we go to the filter and we also have the same thing, um, same same table pretty much. We're going to change that to uh, grams a second as well to prove it. And then also goes to 150, same thing. So we take the filter, we take this number, the value at the end, we copy it and we move it over to 120 and paste it in. Then we go ahead and interpolate to the end. So it just carries on out straight line. And then because I did the other table like this, I'm going to go ahead and do this one the same, just smooth it in like that. And that's it. So that this is the new bias factor and that's pretty much it all we're going to do on this entire uh, tab dynamic um, there's nothing here to adjust because uh, this all in, in in map values rpm and in zones and so so on and so forth mostly um, pretty much no real airflow values here ironically um, over on the electronic throttle tab there's nothing there for you unless uh, you really know what you're doing over here just leave that one alone for now but uh that's it for the airflow tab uh, so this is it for adjustments. Again, the main ones are MAF and BE. These are huge. If you don't do these, nothing will work right. It's going to be completely wrong. So make sure you don't forget these two. Um, but that's pretty much it. So we're going to move right on over to fuel here in a sec. All right, so our fuel tab on our fueling table. So we go to fuel general, and um, we're going to multiply all of these by the percent change, including the injectors and everything else. So basically, um, these are the four tables we need to hit. And we got the flow rate, um, flow rate versus KPA. Obviously, this is our injector flow, and we need to multiply this one in, obviously, otherwise the, none of the calculations are going to work out. That has to be done. It's huge. Um, this one's just as important as the MAF and VE. The cranking fuel, um, these to be to be thorough, again, we can uh, go ahead and adjust these because they're in grams of fuel. So we have to reduce the grams that is spraying in because we're getting 80% less now, or 20% uh, less at an 80% scale. So. That's what we're going to do. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, jump right into that. All right, so here we are uh, on our fuel tab under general. We're going to go ahead and hit up the uh, flow rate first thing, flow rate versus KPA. We just highlight this entire table. We're going to multiply that uh, by 0.8, just like we did the rest of them. So it'll reduce it all by 20% across the board. And we're done with that, simple enough. All of these are pretty easy. Um, we're going to go ahead over to the uh, over here on the right, and we're going to see their um, prime pulse mass. So this uh, in grams, as we see at the top. Go ahead and multiply this by 0.8. Same thing. Um, as you're getting the trend here, you'll see basically everything uh, gets multiplied by this. So first pulse, again, it's in grams as well. So we multiply that in. Um, so it'll let's track in a little less fuel. Um, and same thing with this one again, because again, it's in grams. So we have anything that's in grams, grams a second, pounds an hour, torque or uh, grams of cylinder um, or anything with foot pounds needs to be adjusted and so keeping it true to the true to form we adjust these as well so one two three four and that's it that's it for this table um, and we're going to move right into a couple of harder ones over on the oxygen sensor tab right after this all right so the next tab over we got fuel oxygen sensors so we're going to uh, i'm going to go ahead and point out a special note real quick the following table should already be adjusted for larger injectors already so following scaling adjustments may or may not match up to the percent change all of these adjust all these down in order to correct erratic closed loop STFTs, particularly idle. So if you're running closed loop and you get uh, STFTs on, and you're seeing a lot of shifting uh, flying around with these, um, you might, this might be what's going to fix it for you. Uh, you come down here to the proportional, uh, the proportional idle and integral delay. You're going to find the airflow mode, the airflow, and airflow mode again. Um, these three tables uh, need to be re reduced with larger injectors anyway. So this will correct those erratic STFTs. Now the last one, the airflow uh, mode versus airflow, so that it's, uh, it's very on the top there. Um, this is listed in zones, so this one won't respond to shifting a percentage because it's in, it's in zones. 
Now another note on this table here on the bottom is that uh, a scale may or may not um, be, it, this might might not actually do what you want it to after scaling. It doesn't respond well. It's like it's kind of like the idle tables. So you may find that this table can be maybe left alone. Maybe you have to come back and play with it. Um, this one's kind of up for debate. So that on the bottom table, um, we're gonna uh, I'll show it. I'll point it out, but I'm not really gonna do anything to it. I'm just gonna adjust these three. I'm gonna leave this one out, um, and then you have to come back later uh, to adjust uh, any O2 issues. You might have to come back and play with that one. But uh, I'll, I'll talk about what it does at least in uh, in the next. Uh, Part where we go through this. All right, so we're over on our fuel oxygen sensors tab, and here, right at the very top, you have your uh, airflow um, air fl mode versus airflow tab or table. Um, now, to open this up, it's a uh, this is listed in zones here. This is the airflow zones for the O2 sensors, so 16 being the max. So at higher airflow, it's going to be in zone 16. Um, this is why uh, you'd have to shift this table if any changes at all are made to this table. You're going to shift it. To the left now again this may or may not be required uh, so that's why I point that out just want to make sure because a lot of people end up back to stock with this uh, so if you may have to adjust it you may not uh, so it's kind of like the airflow table so I just want to make sure that one's clear so we're coming down uh, a little bit down to the bottom we got our proportional we have our airflow mode here we're gonna open this and this is a fuel adder again based on those zones so we have the 0 through 16 zones um, and this is going to add di uh, different amounts of fuel based on how much airflow to drive the oscillation. So this is technically uh, going to, this this is amount of fuel here basically. I'm not sure what the units are to be honest, uh, but we're going to go, because it's not listed, but we're going to go ahead and reduce it by the eight, 80% um, just to start. And again, you can end up far lower than this if you still have uh, really erratic closed loop um, STFTs. If they, if they like to jump around a lot, reducing this is going to help that. Uh, remember, the larger the injector, the, l the less fuel you're going to need to drive it because you're going to get a lot of fuel anyway because uh, they're bigger. So we're going to go ahead and uh, leave that 0.8. Um, then we're going to open the next one. We're going to do the same thing. We open the airflow. Same thing. We multiply that by 0.8. And then finally, the last one on the very bottom integral delay, we open the airflow mode again, and we're going to reduce this one by 0.8. And that's it for these tables on this tab. So that's the three that I was talking about. And again, if you have to come back because you have erratic STFTs, this is the place to come. All right, so that's it for that. So we're going to move on to the next tab. Should be transients coming up next. This next one's really short and sweet, really easy. We just go over to our fuel transient tab, and we're going to go ahead and adjust the transient fuel qualifications of min fuel milligrams. We're going to reduce that, and that's pretty much it. So let's uh, um, show you where that's at. All right, so here we are over on their fuel transient tab. We see our transient fuel qualifications over in the top left. This is the amount of fuel that's allowed to use for a transient amount to correct mainly spikes and uh, typically in the idle area. It's really the only thing that's going to really affect for the most part. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and multiply this by our scale percent. Um, to be honest, uh, an, other numbers work fine like 20 or uh, 0 0.02 or something like that. Those work just fine. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, show you the scaled version. So we'll open the calculator and we'll... Uh, multiply that 0 0.041 times 0.8 we're gonna get 0.32 or I eh, call it 0.33 close enough so 0.33 or uh, 0 0.033 excuse me so there we go uh, so that's it um, so that will reduce that as well to match up with our injectors and the rest of our calculations there's nothing else to adjust, adjust along these other tabs because uh, they don't deal with airflow so uh, and there's no other milligram percentages every all the other their other ratios will remain the same so the next thing coming up is going to be the spark tab which should be pretty fun to go over this, this is a lot different than what we've been seeing so far and you're going to see why here in a sec all right so the next tables we need to adjust cannot be multiplied by the percent of change that because it's going to change the entire uh, table we don't actually want to reduce our timing by 80 percent we want to move the load calculation by 80 percent so in the case of anything deal with load or torque which is another form of load um, by the way torque is a it's derived from the same calculations basically um, the entire row must be shifted to the new uh, calculated row so if it was previously calculating 1.0 and we and we uh, 1.0 grams per cylinder as the load we must shift it to the new row which would be 0.8 in this case 
So torque is calculated starting with the MBT table. So there's another thing we have to adjust is actually this, especially if you're in the automatic crowd, that is a big one because uh, it's going to change your, your actual torque calculations as well. Um, this, is a, this is because calculated cylinder air mass of 1.2 with a value of 20 degrees in a ticket cell does not become 16 because that's just not going to be correct and that cell is in fact be very wrong, um, especially if the whole table becomes uh, you know less spark. It's just going to be 80% of spark. We don't want to do that as it would be uh, in a 20% change um, throughout the table. We don't do that. So since we already have act uh, since we've actually changed the load calculation, the new value needs to shift from uh, say 1.2. Um, it would be 1.2 become the 0.96, so 1.2 times 0.08 equals 0.96. Um, however, um, the value in that cell will still remain 20 degrees because 96 is where it's going to get to now. What was previously the 1.2, um, 20 degrees remains the same. So we shift the entire row up. Um, we just move that instead of uh, actually changing the value in the block because that's in degrees. We don't want to change the degrees. We want to change where the where the table is calculated to and based on the scale, this is the kind of the point of getting more out of our spark tables. If that's the reason you're doing this scale, um, this is the whole point. This is, where it's come, this is what it comes down to, is moving all the values to where they need to be based on the percent of change. Uh, so we'll get more into it here in a sec. All right, so as we see, all rows must be shifted up based on the new load calculation. At 20%, 1.2, of course, is 0.96. And so here's the example of this entire row would be shifted up to 0.96 and this is going to apply to every single row on the spark table. Some of them it's not going to line up, match up nicely. Uh, some match up perfect, some don't. Um, some match up close, so you're going to have to pick, pick the best match. Uh, so that's what, we're, that's what we're talking about when we shift the spark table. So we're, this is what we have to do to every single table that references cylinder air mass because this is load on the left. This isn't this isn't in, in uh, uh, this is something, if we multiply this entire table by 0.8, we just effectively reduced all of our timing by, by 20%, which is no, that is not going to work out so, so good for us. So what will though, is we actually have to change anything with this, this particular load calculation and anything in foot pounds as well, that's going to be similar. In, and we will see that later in part three in the transmission tables, but it's going to be very similar to this. So we're going to shift everything this, uh, accordingly. And so one would become 0.8 and so on and so forth. And uh, we'll get a lot more into this. I'll go through and do at least one of these tables to show you what it's going to look like um, uh, as you do it. All right, if you're thinking you had to multiply each row, um, I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going to, I'm going to be nice. I'm, I got you, fam. I'm going, to, I'm going to hook you up. I made this uh, little calculator. And I will post this as an Excel document. I'm going to post it on my thread on LS1 Tech and, uh, and a few others on HP Tuners as well. If it'll let me, um, I'll, I'll, I'll put the uh, I'll put this calculator up and I'll put the link in the description. Um, but basically, what this does is uh, it does all that math for you. So it, whatever you type in the desired scale, scale in the yellow box, it will spit out the number on the right based on the left. So if 80% 120 becomes 96, um, 96 um, matches uh, it becomes 0.77. 0 0.8 becomes 64, and directly across it's directly across from each one. So you'll see it b makes this a lot easier to line up next to your table and actually uh, move the rows accordingly. Now I will say um, this is a lot easier to start at the top and work your way down. As you'll see that 0.12 has no match because it's 0.10, so uh, 0.1. So we don't really need to shift that one in up here on the very top. It's really not going to matter too much. Uh, we should never really see these numbers unless you know, I, it's, it's pretty rare to get even on that row and it's really not going to change much to move this row. So it's not really a big deal. So. 0.12 we can see over here on the uh, the 0.1 doesn't really line up either with 0.8 um, and it, if we look at 0.16 we start with 0.13 0.13 is very close to 0.12 it's within 0 0.1 0 0.01 uh, grams a cylinder each of these um, that show tan are within 0.1 or 0.01 grams a cylinder so we, we go ahead and move these up and uh, that makes it very very close so we move the 0 0.1, 0 0, uh, 0.13 to the 0.12 row um, 0.16, um, that uh, 0.2 becomes 0.16 because it lines up here perfectly. So 0.2 is the 0.16 row now. And 0.24 becomes 0.19 that lines up pretty close to 0.20. So we move that up one. So you just see it's a lot easier to start at the top and work your way down. And as you get to the bottom, you'll see that you know you get to 0.96, it lines up pretty good with 0.77. So we move over and we find whatever's closest to 0.77 on the left and that's going to be our 76 here. But 76 should already moved as well, so 0.61. 0.62, 0.63, 0.64, 0.65, 0.66, 0.67, 0.68, 0.69, 0.70, 0.71, 0.72, 0.73, 0.74, 0.75, 
would go down to 0.6 and so on and so forth. So this makes it pretty easy to use and I'll, I'll, I'll show how to use it here in a sec as we go through the tables and um, we're not gonna, I'm not going to go through every one. I'm going to fast forward like I did last time but um, we're going to shift the tables um, at least to show how it's done and I'm not going to insult your intelligence. I'm just going to show you which ones need to get adjusted um, and uh, trying to make this video a little shorter uh, but I just wanted to make sure I explained how to use this because um, I'm going to post it in the uh, LS1 Tech for sure. That's where this is going to go. Um, so it's, um, hopefully, uh, hopefully this works for you. And if you have any questions, please don't don't hesitate to ask in the comments or on that thread. Um, but uh, without further ado, let's jump right into this and show how to get this done. All right. So here are the spark tables we have to adjust. Um, here are the spark advance. So it's going to be under advance. We're going to shift all rows by the percent change. So uh, that's again by load and not by not by just multiplying everything. It's shift. Uh, so base high octane, uh, the low octane, all the correction tables if you have them, catalyst heating if that's an issue, if you have cats, um, MBT, uh, we're going to ship that, especially if you're in the tra uh, automatic transmission crowd, that's going to be a big one, um, and the idle spark advance, and uh, of course uh, in drive and in part. Uh, so might not apply, all these tables may not apply to everyone, but these are all the ones I'm going to show uh, to change, and I uh, ship by this percent. All right, here we are on the dreaded Spark tab. This is where all the work's going to be um, as far as scaling tune. This is by far the hardest tab to deal with. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is um, go over to our Spark Advance, and of course we see our high and low octane tables. These will have to be adjusted as well as our correction tables um, for IET, ECT, EGR, if that's, a, if that's the case. Um, if you have this uh, MBT, the uh, Spark tables, and that's pretty much it. Um, you might have to, uh, well, that one now. Um, Pretty much it for this this one, uh, but yeah, that's all the tables we're gonna have to shift like this. So here we go with the example. I'm gonna go through one of these tables and show you how to do it. So we're gonna open the high octane table, um, and we're gonna make this um, kind of make it smaller a little bit. Let's shrink it down a little, just to make this a little easier. Because I'm gonna use my calculator. So after that, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna shrink the whole editor down, and I can kind of open it up like that it's fine move this over towards the edge like so and maybe I can get a little more visual there we go so now we can see what we're changing so now we're going to open up the calculator I'm going to kind of put it up to the left over here and um, if you see here uh, if I scroll up you'll see the desired scale on the top enter whatever you like here uh, whatever your scale is you enter say let's say for example 0.5 enter it as a decimal and it's going to change everything to 0.5 that matches directly um, as you see, 0.8 um, becomes 0.4. That doesn't really match up. So you start over here on the left. 0.8 is actually 0.16, etc. So um, and that it'll show you each one um, that matches. So and of course, 0.1, uh, 0.12 would be 0.6. So that would move all the way up here. Um, so that's that's the visual of this. So at 0.8, um, it's going to actually not be direct matches. The greens are direct matches, and the and the tans are within 0.01. So they're the best match, uh, next best. So that's what we're going to use um, to calculate all of this. Um, readjust the size a little bit to get this more on target. Kind of, there we go. Drive this over just a little, and we move this open like that. So we kind of line them up next to each other, and can go row by row now. And we're gonna, I'm going to start at the top, show you how this works, and uh, just bear with me. This might take a little bit to do. So first, uh, first thing we see match up is 0.13. 0.13 is close to uh, 0.12. So, what that means is the point, uh, basically 0.16 becomes 0.13. Um, so, but this doesn't really match up anywhere else. So, 0.12 doesn't match up with anything, and 8 doesn't match up with things. So, we're going to move 0.13 to the 0.12 row. We're going to shift that one up, um, or 0.16, I should say. 0.16 is going to move up one row to 0.12. That's what it's telling me. Because 0.16, 80% uh, of that is 0.13. So I'm going to move that 0.12, it's the best match. So I'm going, to, I'm going to copy that, just slide it up one, like so. And the next one down is 0.16, lines up nicely with 0.2. So 0.2 becomes 0.16. Copy this over, just like that. And as you see, we, we're making changes. So uh, 0.19 lines up with 0.24. So 0.24 becomes 0.2. Um, next match is 0.29 lines up with 0.36, so we move down to 0.36 and move that to 0.28. 0.29 lines up 
0.32 lines up with 0.4 exactly. So 0.32 is 0.4. So we move 0.4 to 0.32. We have 0.35 and 0.44 pretty close. So 0.44 moves down to 0.36. And you'll see the farther you go down, the more these are going to spread out. Just because that's how math works. Um, so we keep moving down. We get 0 0.45, 0 0.56. So 0.56 moves to 0.44, or 45 is as close as it's going to get. So we get that. So um, now we get the, that was 0.45, so 0.48 is 0.6. So we find 0.6, move that to the 0.48 row. If you work from top to bottom, this is very simple. It'll, uh, it won't overwrite each other. Um, that way, it's it just, it just easier this way. Um, <clear throat> Now, of course, 0.51 is going to line up 0.64 pretty well, so 64 becomes 52. Uh, 61 is the next one, 76. 76 moves to 60. And I'm using Control C, Control V to make these copies, um, copy and paste quicker. And that was 0 0.61, so 0 0.64 is 0.8, so 0.8 moves to 0.64. And we scroll down a little. All right, so 0.67 um, lines up with 0.84 pretty well. So 0.84 becomes 0.68. Uh, we got, or what was that, 68? Just lost my spot. Uh, that was 0.68. 67, okay, there we go. 77 seven, seven is 96. So 96 moves to 77, or 76, close. Uh, we got 8 is 1, so that's obvious that so 1 moves to 8, because it's 0 0.8. And uh, it looked like we're about almost done here, because now the rest is pretty much going to be remain the same. Um, but just to carry it on out to make sure, um, we're just going to go keep going. Uh, so 104 becomes 0 0.83. And that's 84. And 93 is 16. So we go 16. Move that to 92. And we got 120 becomes 96. All right. So now we go ahead and open that back up. And now we see this crazy looking spark table because we missed a bunch of spots, right? So here, it's actually better instead of finding another row to move to these, um, all I'm gonna do is just interpolate between vertical bounds and get rid of all of this, uh, all of this change, all these changes. So we see the new wide open throttle area starting here at the, uh, looking right about the 0.84 is now where the new wide open throttle area is basically, um, as you see here on the, on the, on the table. So to, to correct these little um, ridges, I'm going to go ahead and just highlight between the rows like so. So the, the one in the center I want corrected is highlighted and in, in between them. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit interpolate between vertical bounds, the very last one, like so. And it's just going to drop that out and so on and so forth. It's going to smooth it just like that. And I just kind of find the ones I didn't do and uh, interpolate them in. This, this one here, there's one in between. So I'm going to go ahead and interpolate that like so, and looking like this one has to get interpolated, like so, and last one I'll interpolate in, and then I'm going to smooth that out, and bring it up and smooth it in, like so, and maybe smooth the whole table a little, like I like to do, like that, and there's a good looking spark map that's now scaled 80%, that's the shift that has to occur on every single table on this tab which sucks. Um, every single spark table that references the grams per cylinder, so the cylinder air mass, all have to be shifted accordingly, just the same to include the MBT table, just the same. And again, this is going to affect the torque calculations, but this one doesn't get scaled a lot. because you see that the 64 um, is the max on this one. This is used to compare to your, to your main tables. Um, it compares between these two and the AFR and the air mass and then has some other things that we'll talk about later um, but basically each one of these tables I'm just going to change each value a little bit 
I'm just going to add one or something to each table to show you which ones need to be adjusted. Um, so that one, that one, this one, and I'm just adding a number in here just to, to uh, show what tables need to be adjusted. Don't, don't do this. <laughs> this is just showing them in red. Um, so obviously changing is not going to be a good idea uh, to leave it like this. I'm doing this to show you show you which ones need to be done. Okay, so those are the tables we're going to apply that treatment to. We're going to shift them all um, using the calculator, or however you do it, um, by that amount, and that's how we're going to do that to the following tables. And here they are. That's the all of them on this tab have to be adjusted exactly that way, and it sucks. Uh, so my apologies. Um, good luck to you on that. It's going to take you a hot minute to go through and shift all these. That's why a 50% scaled tune is much easier than a any other percentage. However, um, don't recommend going too far on your scaling, again, for reasons noted earlier. So uh, anyway, without further ado, let's, uh, let's move on. Um, so that's the Spark tab, and hopefully, uh, hopefully that's, that's clear. Um, if you have questions, please um, leave them below, and uh, I'll try to answer them for you as fast as I can. Oh, you thought we were done with Spark tables. We're not. Um, but luckily, this one's actually pretty easy to, to change, and um, it's Burst Knock Retard. It's going to be under the... Uh, the retard tab. So we're going to go over there real quick and uh, show that one. Um, this one can be disabled as well. Um, it's optional. Um, kind of recommend to disable this anyway most of the time. But uh, for the sake of being very thorough here, we're going to go ahead and cover it and uh, show what the scale looks like. Alright, here we are. We're on the spark retard tab. Um, so we're going to go ahead and head over here to the burst knock retard. And we'll open this up. And we're just going to multiply this uh, by, because it's in grams. We're going to multiply it by 0.8 and apply that change. Now, conversely, if you want to disable this, you just max the number out. But I'm not going to tell you to do that right now. Uh, we're just not going to talk about that. But um, yeah, that's uh, so that's the one table under these tabs um, that references anything to do with uh, air. So that's it for that. Um, none of these other ones have a, a, a grams. Um, or airflow estimate, so that's the only one, luckily. So that actually takes care of the Spark tab. Let's move on over to the Torque model uh, next. All right, we are almost done. Um, so thank God, I know it's a long video, but we're almost there. Um, the next tables we must account for are Torque model. Uh, so this again applies more to the automatic uh, transmissions out there. Um, you have to adjust this so your Torque models come out more accurate so what we're going to do is uh, these tables will also have an effect on torque management and reduction so that applies to everyone if you use torque management that is if that's not disabled as well in your tune but um i digress uh so we're going to cover this again for the sake of being thorough we're going to make sure we cover everything that should be scaled um uh, per the uh, rules of scaling so the theory here is the calculated load is, is now less um we need le uh, we need to reduce the perceived loss through friction and accessories as well Essentially, a smaller motor would experience less loss, uh, as now it thinks it's producing less power, uh, so it's basically a percentage of loss, essentially. Uh, so the original numbers can be assumed as a percent loss of the, the larger original calculation. So let's say original engine was, was that 8 liter making 1,000 horsepower, now it thinks it's a 4 liter making 500. It's not realistic to assume it's going to lose 100 foot-pounds at the same RPM as the 8 liter would have. It's now going to lose 50 or in theory that would be correct. Uh, so let's just go ahead and move on um, and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and adjust these tables as well. Alright, so here are the torque tables we have to adjust. Uh, so it's going to be under the torque model under loss and then we're going to just multiply it by the percent of our uh, scaling uh, operation. So in theory this should get us closer to the realistic actual losses. So friction base, we're going to adjust that. We're going to drop the accessory torque off and the accessory or the compressor versus AC pressure and the uh, AC compressor versus IT. If you don't have an AC, um, then that doesn't apply anyway. But uh, we're going to go ahead and adjust these just again for the sake of being thorough. Um, we'll make sure, and again, very close to the end of the video. Stay tuned. Uh, we'll uh, get, get this wrapped up very soon. So all right, here we are. Um, we're under the torque model and we're under the, the loss tab. So we're going to go over here to the friction base and we're just going to open this up. Now you can see the original engine at 8,000 RPM at a, a map of 100 was saying that it would lose 109 foot-pounds. 
Now we've shrunk the engine in half, so we're gonna go ahead and chop this down by the, well, by 80%, I should say. We're gonna sh shrink this down by 8.8. .8. So we're just multiply it down, and now that should give us a more realistic output number, and that's gonna show in the scanner as the uh, delivered engine torque. That's the PID we're, we're, we're messing with right now with this. So we're just multiply all of these tables by 0.8, and that should be it. Um, as far as everything else, the torque management and all that, we can leave that alone. Um, I'm not really going to get into that part. I'm just going to show the model because the model should reflect a more accurate number now. Um, it's going to be changed. Uh, so we've, we've changed the entire torque model. Um, we've changed everything as to do with airflow and everything else. And um, so that should be pretty much it for the engine. So stay tuned, we're going to cover the transmission in another video entirely, as in part three, because this video is long as it is, but um, hopefully that was clear enough, uh, and we'll wrap this up. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too long for you guys, but that concludes uh, part two. Uh, so now we've applied the concept of changing all the load calculations to get us into the hard code limits. Uh, keeping in mind, scaling reduces resolution within the operating areas. So the more you scale it, uh, the, uh, the, res the less resolution you're going to have So at the end of the day. So it's important not to scale it too much to, is a big takeaway there. Um, this is completely up to the individual and the build, of course. So if you need to scale it 50%, uh, then scale it 50% if that's the case. Um, so just, just want to throw that in. Um, don't do it just because it's easier. I even put a calculator in there so now you don't have any excuses uh, to do that. And the link for that is in the description. It's uh, linked over to LS1 Tech. Uh, that is for the calculator. It'll take you right there. It's at the bottom of the post, um, on the first page. That is. Uh, remember, um, not all tables respond well to this. I believe uh, believe that's pretty clear at this point. Uh, remember the idle and the closed loop, uh, the trim. Some of those are not going to really like the scaling thing uh, because the just just because calculations may be a little off, so they might need some tweaking after. So this might get you close, uh, kind of best guess, but you're definitely probably going to have to come back. And this just all depends on the car. Uh, so really want to make that clear that um, if you think this is going to work straight out of the box, it probably won't. Um, so you might have to do a little tweaking after the fact. It should get you real close though. Um, just remember that anything that has to do with grams, uh, grams a second, grams, pounds an hour, foot pounds, or any other load calculation basically having to do with air and fuel, you have to scale it. So if I missed any tables, uh, Feel free to leave, leave them below. Um, I might might have missed something. I uh, don't think I did. I think I got everything here. And um, before I sign off, uh, I got to throw a big thanks out, of course, to the originals like uh, Greg Banish out there. I think taught us all how to do this originally. Um, there's some other good, great tutorials. There's one on LS1 Tech. I'll throw the descriptions in. Uh, that's uh, that's going to be from DDN Spider. It's a sticky on the PCM diagnostics and tuning area. And of course, uh, dstech has got one as well. I'll put that link in it uh, as well. Uh, so. Just if, if you guys want to want to read up more on this, and uh, if you're just curious or, or whatnot, even if you don't like, uh, if you don't have to do it, and they just like to know more about tuning, it's uh, some good resources there. So I'll throw that stuff in, and you can see also on those threads, um, release one off LS1 Tech stickies uh, for uh, spiders. Um, that that there's definitely discussion on this stuff here about talking about the closed loop, and it's a good place to go look at that, and of course uh, the idle as well. Um, again. Those tables won't respond well. That they do have to get retweaked after the fact. So good. I'll throw all that stuff in the in the um, in the description down below. Um, links are going to be there. And uh, so without anything else I can think of off the top of my head, I think that's about it. I'm glad you guys uh, guys took the time to watch the video. Or if you got this far and you're still listening to me talk right now, um, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for all the subscribers. Think, uh, just crossing over 1,500 now. Um, so thank you very much for that, um, or I should say 11, uh, 1150, sorry. Um, but thank you very much. Uh, that uh, it, it's uh, We're doing well on the channel. So, so I'll keep these coming, and hopefully, uh, hopefully this, was, uh, this was a good video. And if you liked it, um, feel free to like and subscribe, and, uh, or leave a comment. Um, I love, uh, love reading the comments. So, so I'll see you guys out there. Uh, and remember, um, you can always ask questions and hit me up on LS1 Tech, or any, you find me in a lot of places. So. Uh, um, See you out there, guys.